Hello and welcome to this session. I'm going to take you through how to conduct HTS using Kenya EMR. My name is Bernardo Tieno. I'll take you through this session today. So just to start us off, did you know you can conduct HIV testing and record all the information using Kenya EMR? That is right. Kenya EMR provides for HIV testing and recording of information into the system. So today I'm going to take you through a short video on how to conduct HIV testing and recording the information using Kenya EMR. So in front of me I have a HTS test client that I've already registered. So what we're going to do now is going to test this client uh, and make the referrals and possibly capture the, the contacts as well. So we'll just get started. So the first step is to search for the client, which I've already, already done. So the first step is to click HIV testing services. Right now we don't have any testing history. The next step is to check in the client for the test. So we'll select our patient for now. And the testing we are doing, we are doing it today, 25th January. We submit that. So after checking, you are able to see three available forms uh, for us right now. We are not going to do the triage for now. We'll just uh, limit ourselves to HTS forms. So the first thing is to conduct eligibility screening. So we are going to do that using the eligibility screening form. So we are going to fill this. Uh, now the patient. Not patient. Yes, as tested before, it was negative, it was dated, let's say, last year, same time. So the patient eligible for testing, yes. So we have completed the eligibility screening. The next thing is to now refer this client to, for, for, for HIV testing. So we are going to start by filling the HTS initial form to do our first test. We specify the HTS date, we specify the population type, uh, and disability, no. Uh, I've been tested before, maybe yes, it has been made more, more than six months. Has the client done HIV self-testing in the last 12 months? Maybe yes. HTS strategy to be used. We can select that. As client consented, yes, um, client tested as individual, so we are going to specify the testing kits. So the first one is determine, we specify the lot number, then we specify the expiry date. Then the result is... Uh, for now, we are going to say positive. The second test, we can specify the lot number. The expiry date. And the result for now will say positive. Couple is discordant. Before that, let's specify whether the result was given or not. So, result given to client, yes. So, couple discordant is automatically selected to not applicable because this client is testing as individual, as we have seen up here. Then the TB screening section. So, for now, maybe we will select no TB signs. Uh, we are referring this client for confirmatory test. We have uh, other options available like comprehensive care center or DBS for PCR. So for now we are going to pick the confirmatory and refer to uh, current health facility. So if you look at the list, there is uh, the option of um, referring this land to a different facility. They opt for that. Uh, but for our case, in this example, let's just select the current health facility 
then the, the provider can include some notes, maybe refer for, yeah, so any comment that maybe the provider is, uh, would like to include. So we enter that. So we are, we are done with our initial test. So you see, because the client has turned positive, now we have uh, other forms available for us. We have the HTS retest form and the HTS linkage form. So the second form you're going to fill here is the HIV retest for this particular client. So let's fill that. Of course, the forms are similar with the previous one we just filled and you can see some fill are already pre-filled for us. The strategy we maintain uh, the integrated VCT sector. Uh, as client consented, yes, and it is important in this case to really uh, consent because if the client has not consented, then uh, the form ends right there. You, you are unable to continue. So it's always very important uh, to have the client con uh, consent uh, for you to continue with this form. So in our case, we assume the client is consented. So client has uh, been is being tested as individual again. Kit name is going to be used is determine. Uh, we specify the lot number. Uh, we specify the expiry date. And in this case, we assume the result is positive. Then we do the first response. Uh, we specify the expiry date again. Positive. But it's also very important for you to note that if we have the first test as positive and then the next, the second test as negative, then our final result is inconclusive. Yeah, so the system also provides for that. But in our example, let's just assume it's uh, positive. The result was given, yes. A couple is discordant, yes. TB screening result, no TB. So we are referring, this client is now supposed to be referred to the intensive care center. So we are going to select the second option. But of course, if there are other referrals, you can specify as applicable. So we are going to refer this patient to this particular facility and we can add in any uh, comment that we want. So you can say, this is a refer for enrollment. Okay. So once we do that, you review uh, what you've captured. Uh, if you are satisfied that everything checks out, then uh, you enter form. So if you look at the HTS summary up here, you see we have the first test and the second test as part of the testing history uh, together with the results and the entry points uh, for HTS. So then the next form, if uh, now that the, our client is positive, the next form you're going to fill is the linkage form. So this is kind of linking this client um, to the facility. So first we are going to do uh, the contact listing. So we do the contact listing uh, by clicking this, the provider action panel, we have the link to contact listing. So I'll click on that. Uh, then on this screen, now we can add uh, as many contacts as are, as are available or as uh, have been elicited from the client. So the first thing is to capture the demographics of the contacts. So we'll start by maybe writing. So we have the first contact, aged, uh, aged 23, who is single. Um, they have an address, a relationship to client, maybe it's a sexual partner, not living in the client. So for the sexual partners, the, the, the form will give you the section for IPV, which is very important for you to fill. So because this is a sexual partner, we are prompted to fill in the, uh, the IPV questions. So we'll just fill them very fast. Uh, the IPV outcome is automatically selected to false. 
So baseline HIV status is unknown and uh, this contact is booked maybe for for term and uh, we are going to adopt the provider referral as the PNS approach. So we save the contact. So we can elicit more if we have another one. So we can have uh, a second contact named uh, then we specify the gender maybe this is a male uh, maybe married relationship maybe it's a spouse no then we fill in the IPV question because this is also partner we have a uh, IPV outcome automatically selected to false. Uh, the HIV is not the HIV status is not known, and this patient can be booked to be seen on 8 February by passive PNS approach. So we review this and then we save. So from the list, as you can see, we have uh, two contacts. And we can view the contacts through the uh, contact tree. Okay, so the tree can expand or shrink based on the number of um, contacts available and how they are related to the, to the index uh, client. Okay, so for each of the contacts, we can record tracing history for the contact. For instance, we can record the history for contact number one by clicking on the history. Then we had we added the trace history, so we can say the first what we did was, um, let's say today, and we have contact type. We do it our tracing through a phone call. The outcome maybe is contacted. Then we can write our notes uh, depending on the outcome. Then we create that contact. Okay, then we can also record the same for contact two. You can add trace. So this is recorded every time uh, efforts are made to trace this particular contact. So, uh, so we specify the date, the tracing date, the contact type, maybe physical, and the outcome is maybe not contacted for the reason that maybe uh, the patient was not found. So we can write notes on that and we save. So that is how we record the tracing information for each contact uh, that we link to this particular client. So now we can go back home under HTS and now link this client now that we've done um, we've done the elicitation and we've, we've recorded the, the contacts so we i click on the hts linkage so facility links to you can because we are linking to this facility we simply say this facility uh, then the ccc number provided so we can have 2700 um, okay so this is the cc number that is obtained uh, at the point of enrollment at the ccc uh, then healthcare worker handed over to uh, we can say handed over to janet PSC, who is a nurse uh, date enrolled uh, same day, ARV start date also um, same day. Then we can add in all the notes that we would like during the enrollment. We review uh, the information and then we enter the form. So as you can see on the HTS dashboard, um, we have the linkage information we have the HIV test history and down below we have the forms that, that have been completed for this client uh, during the HIV testing process.
Now, that is how you perform HDS services using Kenya EMA. For further information on this and more, please visit our website on the link provided. You can also reach us through our toll-free service desk line on the number provided. Thank you.